whenever Jake thinks of the number 45, he's going to think of D. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> oh my God. Well, how are you doing right now? Because obviously like this has been something seven months in the making. You knew out on the island that you had won, but now that you get to see it back, it's official. And especially watching, you know, the last couple of weeks from my perspective, seeing you really emerge as this force. What has it been like for you to rewatch this journey? Um, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. Luckily, I am very self-aware and I know myself and I don't let like comments get to me, but there's always like one or two that you start thinking of a part, a part of you is like, does a part of me think it's true? You know, you start like going deeper. Um, but watching it back last night, it, I am still in shock. I feel like I was out in the island and Jeff was in front of me reading the boats. Like that's how I felt. And of course it's mixed with like deep gratitude too, because like everyone wants to play survivor, right? And the chances of that happening are so low, but even more lower chances are winning it. So I have so much gratitude in my heart. It's I'm, it's still shocked. <laughs> well, you were certainly making some shocked faces when those votes were coming in. Uh, because look, you certainly had some confidence about your winning chances and we'll get into that. But when it comes to the final outcome, given how final tribal shook out, what jury votes surprised you both for and against you? Um, yeah, so I have both answers to that. So four, Caleb surprised me oh. because Caleb and I, we didn't really play too much. He was the first member of the jury. We had like that clash. Obviously, it was an in-game clash. Um, love him. Um, but we had that clash and it had been like two weeks since like he played the game. Right. So in my head, I was like, all right, I don't know where his vote is going. Um, so that one surprised me for for me. And then against me, I think Kendra's was the one that surprised me a little bit more because I knew for certain that Drew would vote for Austin and also Bruce because like I call him out at tribal too which I played with fire I shouldn't have done that but whatever lesson learned um but yeah Kendra surprised me a little bit but um they also played longer in the island together than Kendra and I did because they were in the swap together yeah so going to that final tribal performance I mean again you really highly rated your chances and it seemed like the jury did as well how do you look back on your performance obviously you get some nice bombs that you drop but austin as he promised was also really putting up a fight there yeah um i i thought i did great i thought we all did i right when um in the fire challenge um the final immunity challenge and and the tribal they cut it up but i had told jeff i'm like jeff if and I look at all of I'm like, if you need to shit on my mother, like you guys shit on my mother. Like I am coming for you. Like my fire is coming out. Um, so I think I did just that. And I'm very proud of myself. And it, it was fun. It was fun. And the jury did a great job at asking us questions, like rough questions, but also like emotional ones. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So that big reveal you make to Austin about how you had tipped Julie off about playing the idol. I mean, Obviously, a mic drop moment for me. What's interesting is I was talking with Austin and he said that actually happened earlier than what was shown. So talk to me about the strategy of deploying that, because it didn't seem like maybe as shown it was this, OK, I'm saving this in the tank for a last minute thing. What do you mean happened earlier than what was shown? He had said that it actually was you actually had revealed that fact earlier on in tribal council. And so all the arguments yes. that he was making was kind of in response to that. Absolutely. But um, I was waiting. So yes and no, because that happened early on in the tribal, but I didn't want to lead with that at tribal because that was my biggest move to differentiate. And I knew that it would shock the jury. So I actually waited until Austin brought it up first. So Austin had like taken the credit for like, it wasn't Emily, but he said something. And then I was like, no. Nah. It wasn't it. But that happened early on in the tribal. So some of the questions were rearranged for sure. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So let's talk about this game, D. Uh, I mean, going to that move, I suppose. I mean, I know Drew said the tribe was full of bad actors, but you might have been the, the best among them, considering that you seem to genuinely trick everyone into making them believe that you did not purposely tip Julie off to playing this idol. Talk, talk, talk me behind the scenes of this masterclass of a performance. How are you able to pull it off? Mike, this is the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. Like I, like I said, I don't lie in the real world because if you ask me for something, I will tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. And if you want my honest opinion, but this was absolutely insane. Like I, as soon as I went back, so they only obviously showed me speaking with Austin, but I had a conversation with every single person because every person had a conversation with me beforehand telling apology on, on, on an apology tour saying like, Hey, D, so sorry, it's going to be Julie. And I just had to be like, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. 
and then coming back the Katora swearing on my family Austin swearing on my family like and mind you it wasn't me just being a good actress because Julie was also the great actress because we had like what three four days left in the game we made it so awkward at camp to the point where like let's say you're having a conversation with someone we'd sit right next to each other and be silent so this actually happened for two days like and it was very hard because then we had to plan like hey when whenever we need to talk it has to be briefly and Julie has to like approach me because she's the one mad at me right and I'm the one that betrayed her so it, it was it was a lot of fun I'm not gonna lie I I didn't know if I would be able to put it off but I knew I was gonna like lie my ass off to try to pull it off <laughs> like and yeah it's crazy because I would never like swear at my parents like in the real world but on Survivor though <laughs> anything goes well anything when it comes when it comes to Julie talk to me a bit about that relationship something that you clearly prioritized for the end game because we also know at that point people are saying she could be the odds on threat to win yeah. did you have intentions of even if that final five vote goes a different way did you want to take her to the end game with you 100 percent. i always went in the game as i'm never 100 percent. you can never be 100 percent on other people right so i was always like 98 percent sure that austin and julie would never write my name but i was also 100 percent on my end that i would never write their names ever and like I would do whatever it takes to take them to the end and unfortunately even if that meant that one of the two like backstabbed me because they really were my blind side like I was blinded by them if they if they blindsided me it would have been inc insane I would have never seen it coming because they're the two people that I put like my absolute trust in and I 100% was going to take her to the end with me it just so happened that in that final five vote it was out of my hands. I, I was told that like right before tribal again. <laughs> and at this point, I'm like, well, I'm not writing her name for sure. So you figure out what you want to write. But I really thought that it was going to be Katora. Like I thought I didn't think Jake was going to use his idol on Katora. Mm. So yeah. something that we noticed, you know, you probably have seen the memes a bit is that it did seem like throughout the post merge, every time you're like, OK, this person is going to go, they would end up going. What do you yeah. credit for that? Because that's like the 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 you know the secret sauce of Survivor, right? Is convincing other people to do something that's in your own favor. Yeah. So the thing about Survivor, um, and you know, everyone's like, oh, think dominant, very safe. Like it's very hard to hear your name post merge and hear your name as a threat every single time because you have to lower yourself every time. So what you have to do is obviously be extremely intuitive and always be watching who talks to who after tribal, who goes on longer walks, like who doesn't talk to me, who doesn't speak strategy with me. There's, there's a lot going on. Right. Um, so wait, I, lo I lost track of the question. Was the uh, just, question. Uh, just like the fact that you were able to get the other Rebas oh, most importantly right. to be like, I'm going to get rid of, you're going to get rid of who I want you to get rid of. Yeah. So the thing with the, the thing out there, there's always a shinier object and you got to make people believe that there's a shinier object. So every time with Reba, what was so special about us is that we get, we gave and we took, we gave and we took like, for example, the Kelly, I didn't want her gone, but I understood that there was an amulet that we turned into an idol. And then the four of us would be used in rotation or at least to have information in the game. Right. And then the whole Kendra thing, it was funny because it shows that I just want her out because of her name, but it's not necessarily just that. It's because she was the first person. She was so perceptive of Austin and I. She was the first person to catch on to us. So I would tell Austin and Julie and Drew she needs to go because she said my name, but really it's because she caught on to Austin and I. But I couldn't say that out loud because I couldn't tell Julie and Drew that Austin and I are in a showmance. Nonetheless, producers, because we weren't in a real showmance, like we'd flirt, we'd hug, but our heads were in the game. We didn't really start opening up until we were in the majority. So I was like, oh yeah, she said my name, but no, it was because she was so perceptive that she needed to go because it was going to be bad for my game. It was going to come back to me because what also wasn't shown was Drew telling me that uh, uh, Kendra told him that I had a crush on Austin. So I'm like, oh, hold up. These are two people now. So this girl has to go because now she's going to get that in people's heads and like, she's likable. You know what I mean? So yeah. I couldn't have that floating around. Like anything that floats back to me is a danger to my game. So you got to go. <laughs> so obviously we knew a lot about the Reba dynamics, but it's clear that you were making relationships outside of it. You mentioned sort of like having this closeness with Kelly, which you spoke to me about. You talked to it in the final tribal council of like, okay, you brought in Emily Austin. I brought in Katora. What would you say yeah. were some of the most important relationships you had outside of the Rebas? 
Um, the Kelly one was really important, but it, it obviously was short lived because <laughs> people saw us together and we even told each other, like, we got to stop talking. Like, everyone knows that we like love each other. We got to stop talking. Um, and it wasn't shown. Um, Kelly, when she went to the journey with the Jay and Austin, um, Austin came back and told me the truth right away. Right. And so uh -huh. I knew that Jay lied. And then I knew that Kelly lied. So I go to Kelly and I sit her down at the beach. I'm like, Kelly. I want to work with you. I got the numbers, but you got to tell me what happened on the island. I already knew the truth. And she was such a good liar that I was like, oh my God, this girl did not budge. She's so good at playing this damn game. So I, I went back and I was like, all right, yeah, okay. I'm down for her to go. Um, But Katora was important. Like, I feel like our relationship wasn't really shown a lot. Like, and also I think it wasn't shown a lot too, because a lot of our conversations that were had were like family. It was relationships. It was like outside. Right. And, and mm. that helped because as soon as Katora came to the merge and we knew that she was at the bottom, she was telling Julie and I the story of how like the the whole ring that Jake lost the mm -hmm. ring and all of that. And I know this sounds mean, but like Julie and I were laughing, like the three of us were cracking up at the water where we're like, that's kind of messed up. But that's actually pretty funny that they, they did that. That's really smart. But then after she left, Julie and I had a conversation like, oh my God, we can pull Katoro in. She's at the bottom and she likes us and we like her too. So let's make this work. And she did, was a huge part of a lot of um, the votes, especially that didn't involve Drew and Austin. Mm. Yeah. So look, we, we got to turn to the Austin of it all. I mean, you talk about it sort of being a, a late blooming thing. Did it catch you by surprise? You mentioned these sort of moments of like, cuddling in the shelter, et cetera. Once you hit that majority, was it really from like zero to 60 instantaneously? And what was your reaction to that? Because <laughs> while Austin certainly had like pie in the sky, showman's aspirations, you certainly did not. Yeah, absolutely insane. I even said in like one of the interviews, like red flag, no showman's is you cannot do that. Um, that obviously shocked me the fact that that happened, but it didn't shock me how once we had majority, we kind of like let loose a little bit. Um, but what was I going to say? Yeah. So basically like our heads were in the game and I respect him so much for that, that it didn't start off as a showman's because I could never forgive myself. Like if we got out because somebody caught us as a duel and we, we left the game. Right. Um, but sorry, excuse me. No, it didn't shock me. It didn't shock me. I'm so grateful that it happened the way it did. And it was later in the game because it showed like the respect that we have for the game and okay, now we got majority. Now we can like learn a little bit more. So <laughs> yeah. So then what was it like for your perspective to obviously do things like take out Drew? I mean, this season was all about negotiating emotions versus logic. It seems like to your credit, you perhaps handled that a bit better than Austin considering what he did in the exact same situation, but talk about yeah. your own struggle, struggle doing something like that. Yeah, honestly, Drew was very the hardest one emotionally but that's because I had an emotional attachment to him too and it's like mm. he had to go because he was the first one to turn on us he wanted Julie out and then I also was very fe fearful of Drew and Emily's relationship like I knew that Emily was closer to Drew than she was with me and I knew that that's like that's that's a threat like they, they gotta go but it, it was it is very sad it's very sad and I think it was even more sad to not tell Austin and blindside him but I also knew that he would respect it like because had he done it to me too I would have understood it like I would have hurt like I would have probably cried for sure because I did cry when Julie went home but I would have cried but I would have respected that it was the game right and I still would have trusted that he would have taken me to the end just like I'm glad that he still trusted me that I, I kept my word like I'm taking you to the end like we're we're in this together you know now listen I'd have to give in my press credentials if I did of course ask about the real life update now Austin gave his answer I'm intrigued to say if you're on the same page here much like in the game I think we might be on the same page. I don't I don't think you'll like my answer, Mike, but we, we decided to keep it private for now just because it's been so emotionally draining this entire process and it's going to get crazier after too. So we're decided to just keep it private for now. Oh, but yeah. all good things. <laughs> all good things. Okay, that's that's good to hear. I mean, last quick thing I want to ask. You were, you know, the first native Cuban to play Survivor and we're one for one so far. Yeah. You brought home the win. I mean, talk about that representation. What has the Cuban community been responding to, especially the dominance in the Ultimate W at the end of the day? Oh, man. Yeah, my phone has not stopped blowing up. I'm like on 30 minutes of sleep. It was it was really fun to watch back with my family. Like we cried a ton um, and it, it's a lot of responsibility to hold that. But it, it's cool. Like I always went in the game and I said like, 
you know, obviously I want to win and the money that is the goal, duh, the million dollars, but more than like the title itself, it's just like having someone watch me on TV and say like, damn, I want to do what she's doing. Or like, damn, I want to do something that scares me or like, damn, I don't want to live an average life, you know? And I think that's so important to like go out there and do things that scare you. And I did that. And I hope that someone's watching me and says like, man, she's cool. I want to be your friend or she inspired me. And that to me is like, that is worth more than the title, even though I know the title is huge, but crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I think for what it's worth, I mean, your game really pinged on a lot of people's radars. I'm sure you've been seeing, you know, most dominant winner of the new era, best player of the new era. So I do That's think crazy. that what you were able to bring is going to, uh, I think, live in the minds of a lot of Survivor fans and perhaps future players in many different yeah, ways. I hope so. I hope so in all good ways. I hope so. Well, I am so happy that I got to talk with you as always. I mean, you were just an, a delight for lack of a better term, so as I say stupidly <laughs> enough, but like getting to watch you do what you do, especially the past few weeks was so awesome to watch and to see it all come up, you know, with a million dollars in your name was so fantastic to watch with, oh, you know, perhaps, you so yeah, of course, but perhaps with a relationship to boot, it was, it was a, an ultimate victory for you in so many ways. So thank you as always, Dee. Oh man, thank chat. you. You're awesome. <laughs> oh, likewise. Well, all the best to you and your family and hope you have a happy holiday. Thank you. Happy holidays. We'll talk soon. Yep. Bye Dee.